It has been a long day today, and I just had a glass of wine. One glass, and I look like this, so you can... Uh, that this is official proof how much of a lightweight I am. <laughs> but in today's vlog, we are going to talk about three bullets to dodge when you are a practicing musician. So, if that's something that interests you, then I highly recommend you stick, a, stick around or watch along or uh, do any of those things. Thanks for not clicking away. You guys are awesome. See you on the inside. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nathalie. I'm a musician and in today's video we're going to talk about three things that we should actually avoid while practicing even though they might seem like things that are supporting us and that's such a fun, funny thing that a mind can play tricks on us like that. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. We're gonna start off with one of my personal biggest traps <laughs> and that is putting perfection over musicality. You know, the great Ludwig from Beethoven said that to play a wrong note is insignificant. To play without passion is inexcusable. And he's absolutely right. I had major luck being able to go to a concert by Daniel Trivanov yesterday in the Musikverein here in Vienna. And he was exquisite, as he is a master pianist. And it was absolutely wonderful. But there was one piece in which he truly, truly caught me, beginning to end. And that was the one where the musicality shone through more than in the other pieces. And that's, or that to me, is what being a musician is about. It's about connecting with your audience, storytelling, making sure that you take them on this journey and that you can grab their attention and hold them there. And that is not something that is being learned when you just focus on technique, on getting the notes right, on getting the rhythm right, practicing without pedal, which are all things that should be done and that I am doing diligently. But in the end, when you're on stage, if you haven't um, spent enough time really figuring out what it is that you want to hear, what colors that you want to go for, how you're going to interact with the room, with the piano, with your audience um, in the moment itself, you really feel that you're coming. And that's also usually when your brain really gets in your way and you're trying um, to get a piece really, really right and then it's just bound to go wrong because you're tensing up so much and, you know, it's like a domino. <laughs> One after the other will fall. So, if you want to feel a little bit more comfortable on stage and you might experience a lot of performance anxiety, this is a place to start, to really practice musicality, practice the way you want to phrase, experiment, be okay with playing wrong notes. If you're practicing your musicality, it's really, it's not about hitting all the right notes, it's about hitting that certain atmosphere, or being able to tell the story, and start from there. And I truly believe, at least it was for me like that, that it can really reduce performance anxiety. Something that any musician slash entrepreneur knows all too well, the second your mind starts wandering during your practice session, you have lost the game. <laughs> it's really, you gotta be sure that the practice that you're doing is a focused type of practice. Anything else is just a colossal waste of your precious time. And you might feel super good about being able to practice three hours today, but if in those three hours you have had two and a half hours where your mind was racing and thinking of all the people you still have to call, of all the emails you have to write, the invoices that you have to write, the lesson preparations you have to do for your students, the, I don't know what it could be, but if any of that was going on in that three hour practice session of yours, you'll have lost that time. We are doing so much when we are practicing, we are monitoring our body for any extra tension, we are doing extremely fine neurological pathway building 
um, when we are practicing a new piece of music, we're getting to know a composer maybe, the writing style, also some background on, on that composer and the music that you're playing. You're listening super intently to all the phrases that you're doing, trying to build fluency in both your um, movements but also in the phrases. It's basically endless and you cannot expect from yourself that your brain can then also spend time with anything else <laughs> while you're practicing. That's just, that's, that's insane. <laughs> or inhuman, at least. So, be kind to yourself. If you notice that your mind is wandering, first of all, try and be aware. Secondly, either take a break, go around the block or something, don't start scrolling, don't do it, you know it's a rabbit hole, don't do it. Um, or, if it's really something that you can't take care of, do it. Cross it off your to-do list, make sure that you have some space in your brain, and then sit down behind your instrument again and enjoy your practice time. Really, 15 minutes of focused, uninterrupted practice is going to be worth way more than the three-hour practice session with lots of stuff going on in your brain. The third big bullet that we should dodge is imbalancing our practice time vs our performing time. Practice time is usually something that we know well. It's something that our teacher does with us in class, at least if you have a good teacher, so you know what to do at home. Um, but it's basically everything that we do in order to make a piece of music as or to know it as best as we can. So we do the technique, we do the hand separate practice, we do the pedaling, we check out the phrasing, we make sure that our body is uh, loosened up and you know not uh, tense anywhere, we listen to the sound that we make, we do everything and when something goes wrong we fix it. <laughs> We're not ones to just keep playing to the end and then you know start back from the beginning and go play to the end and call that practice because that's not practice. Practice is really making sure that you cover all the bases, that you're prepared for anything that might come your way during performance. And performance, however, is when you sit down behind your instrument and you play the music as nice as you possibly can. That's performing. If something goes wrong, you're not wrong. If you're a musician, you're always 100% right. <laughs> or at least that's something that you should be thinking. Um, there's really no wrong when you're performing. You definitely don't show it, you don't stop, you don't go back to fix it. It's just from start to finish, one way through. And that is often something that we forget to practice. Um, one of the best ways to do so, especially if you don't have access to a friendly audience um, immediately, is recording yourself. It could be audio, could be video. If you can, I recommend video because often it's easier to detect things when we can see ourselves playing. It'll be easier to see the faces that you make when something goes wrong or not exactly your way. It'll be easier to check out if you're really loose or if you're tensing somewhere. Um, it'll be easier to see if you're sitting at the right height or you know, if something in your posture goes off. Um, Whereas, obviously, with audio, you will still hear when something is going wrong and you can make the notations in your score, which is absolutely perfect. So, recording yourself and actually listening to it is a really, really good thing in order to practice performing. And remember, performing is when you go from beginning to end. That is not practice. That's performing. Um, another good thing is making sure that you have a couple of times that you can perform for perform for someone. Maybe a family member, a friend, maybe a tiny group of friends, some peers, colleagues, um, other students, um, whatever it is that gets you in that feeling of being on stage and ready to perform for people because this always is a different feeling than you just being at home and playing for yourself. There is this adrenaline, this um, high performance kick that gets into your body and that just shakes up <laughs> everything chemically also in your brain time seems to go super fast well and it, actually it's not it's just the same but for you your mind just goes so fast um, that often 
maybe if it's the first time you're performing something, you'll get the comment like, oh, you can take more time. At least that's something that I've experienced many, many, many times. Um, and I imagine that I'm not the only one. So balancing your practice time via your performing, yeah, performing time or performance time is really, really vital in order to be as well prepared as you can for a concert. Now, of course, the world is not perfect. And sometimes we are performing concerts where we maybe just had a week and a half to prepare it or a month. And it's just a fact that the longer you play, you, the longer you play a piece, the better you know it. And one of my professors used to say that you don't actually really know a piece until you've played it for over a year. So if you don't have that time and you do need to perform, make sure that you set the bar for yourself as high as you can reach it. You play like completely devoted to the music, but don't expect from yourself that this is going to be the same level as a piece of music that you've been playing for over a year, because that would just make no sense. If you can play a piece of music the same level as a piece of music that you've been practicing for over a year, then there's something off with your practicing over a year, in my opinion. So these were the three biggest bullets to dodge. I can almost not speak anymore, so it's time for me to shut up. <laughs> in that case, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, then maybe you would consider giving a thumbs up or even subscribing. That would be awesome. In that case, welcome to the family. If you have some bullets to dodge <laughs> of your own, um, you can leave them in the comments or if you have you, some experience that you want to share around this topic, then by all means open up the conversation. It's always so fun to hear from you. If you have a request for a vlog, you're always welcome to uh, leave it in the comments below. I'm happy to oblige where I can. Um, maybe you really like my content and you want to become a patron. That would be amazing. In that case, just check out the link in the uh, description box below. And with that said, I will leave you to it. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you're in excellent health and you're enjoying the music that you're playing. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.